an issue that concerns us all and one that isn't often discussed in Harrisburg, and that is getting away from being mired in the day-to-day -day incremental discussion about our budget on a line-by-line -line basis about one budget line going up a percentage point, another budget line going down, a budget, you know, a, a two percentage points. We need, we've lost touch and we need to get back uh, on, on track in looking at the trends and the structural deficiencies of our budget over a period of time. And for those, those who may not know us, I, I'm Stephen Bloom, State Representative, and I'm John Eichelberger from the State Senate. And really what we're about today is providing some context, the big picture of what it is that's burning up our Pennsylvania budget. And why we're in a situation that really has led us to a, a very real fiscal crisis in Pennsylvania. Uh, the first chart that we have for you is one that should scare even the most liberal folks in Pennsylvania. And that, as you can see, is the trend we have for our spending in this state. This is our state budget spending. It's gone up since 1970 from $4 billion in our total operating budget to over $63 billion. Uh, with inflation adjusted dollars, that's a 146% increase. And uh, for, a family of four, for a family of four, that's gone up $11,800 in inflation adjusted dollars. And the question that that brings to mind is, are we 146% better served by our government now than we were in 1970? I wouldn't make that argument. I wouldn't make that argument either. And, and, and without doing significant reform, we're not changing that. We're continuing on this, this escalation to just uh, uh, increase our spending. And, and uh, although we've made some changes in the last year or two, uh, we're, we're here to show you that uh, when you look at some of the, some of the, f the, the real core areas of, of where we are with the budget and things that, that will be long-term fixes, uh, we're not going to get out of this anytime soon, even though we have a governor that has made some significant changes and, and departures from our past governor. Uh, it's not enough, and we, we need to get much tougher with, with our spending. Our, our first chart on this uh, four-alarm fire that we have, which we're ringing the bell for today to draw attention to this. Now, the first alarm we have is public pensions. And uh, this is a generation of debt and obligation that is, is uh, choking our, our uh, funds in Pennsylvania and our taxpayers. This is going up in the future, from 2011 to 2014, at a rate of 40% each year. So as bad as this chart looks, it's going to continue to look worse. And uh, it's consuming more of our state budget each and every year. Um, we need some solutions to that. We need to, to have significant pension reform. We've done a little, but it's not near enough. So that's, that's uh, one of our first priorities. Our second alarm is our public welfare crisis in Pennsylvania. We have a safety net program, public welfare, uh, that I would argue the net has been torn wide open. And until we mend that net, we have uh, too much going through it. And we've opened the doors wide in, in, that, uh, in that arena. We, we need to uh, have reform there as well. We need to have uh, uh, the uh, waste and abuse that harm the families of Pennsylvania uh, controlled. We need to have a different attitude with our welfare program, and we're starting to talk about that. We're, we're looking at trying to help folks that are in the safety net program and getting them out of that multi-generational dependency on government and giving them the dignity they deserve with a paycheck and something they can take pride in and support their families on their own. And we've gotten away from the real intent of simply helping people for a brief period of time until they can get back on their feet into an entitlement program that is multi-generation. And John, when you look at that graphic, what you see, how much welfare spending has increased, what we've done is created a, a culture of dependency, a cycle of dependency, which as you point out, is not the purpose of public welfare. The idea is not to create long-term dependency. The idea is to provide that safety net 
on a temporary basis as people can recover and restore a, a balance to their to their financial lives. So we we we're doing the wrong thing, and it's going in the wrong direction, as you as you can see by that diagram that you talked about. Our third alarm is public debt. The debt service we have at this point has grown uh, dramatically, as you can see, over the past uh, 10 years, from $350 million to this current year, f this current fiscal year's debt uh, of uh, debt obligation of over $1 billion in a 10-year period. And this is something that isn't discussed widely. And we continue to borrow money for various reasons, some better than others, but none of them are good. But we, we continue to borrow the money, and um, it's gone up 89% in this period of time. And for anyone who doesn't understand what that means, that's our state's credit card, for lack of a better explanation. This credit card is getting a balance on it that's unsustainable and gets bigger every year, even in a year like last year, where everyone knew that times were tight and we had to cut back that debt continues to grow because it's, it's on fire. It's, it's burning up and we're not, we're not able to, to put it out so far. And, and again, over the next several years, it's projected to grow 7.3% each and every one of those years. So this is not the peak. It's going to continue to grow without borrowing any more money. And there's certainly a lot of proposals out there to borrow more money. Um, we, you know, in Pennsylvania with combined state and local government debt, we're looking at uh, almost $10,000 for every man, woman, and child in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. is, is what we're at at the moment. And that, again, it's only going up. We'll get deeper. That's right. The fourth alarm is corrections in our budget. This is a, this is a, uh, a very significant problem that, um, again, isn't on everyone's radar screen, and, and it, should, it needs to be. Pennsylvania spends about $35,000 for each prisoner we have. We have uh, a recidivism rate that is, that is not better than most states. We have a crime rate that is not better than, than uh, many states. And um, our incarceration rate has climbed just dramatically. It's gone up 500% since 1980. We've built 18 new prisons since 1980. Um, and even with 18 new prisons in Pennsylvania, we are 13 percent over our capacity, over our bed capacity as we sit here today. So we've continued to lock up a, a huge segment of our society and uh, we, we're not changing the criminal element the, the way we need to change them so that we don't have the um, the cost and we don't have the social benefit of having people come out that uh, have some kind of new attitude where they'll go back and be more productive members of society. And again, when you look at the next three years, this growth is expected to be 6.9 percent each and every one of those three years. So again, we have um, a continuing problem that is only going to magnify over the next several years. So the house is on fire, and it's a four-alarm fire. That's right. Well, how do we respond to that emergency? It's, it's a situation that cries out for someone to, to start dumping some water, some, spraying some foam, whatever it takes to, to get this fire under control. And quite frankly, there is some good news in the budget that was proposed by the governor. It's not, it's not all bad news. There's some water going on the fire. Spending goes down under the governor's new budget for the second year in a row. That is, that is truly unprecedented in Pennsylvania history. It was 40 years between overall budgets that actually went down. The first one was, was cut last year. This year we have a second year in a row where the governor has now proposed reducing the overall amount of money that the Pennsylvania government spends. So that's good news. That's some water on the fire. But the bad news, right in that budget, and you could think of it as almost a uh, adding some, some gasoline to the fire instead of some water is the fact that even under this budget, which reduces spending for the, for the upcoming 2012-2013 year, we're still projecting to spend more than we take in as a state. Well, common sense tells any of us that that's not sustainable. That's how this fire got 
to be the raging fire it is today, and we're still looking at a budget that does more of that. We need to get realistic and project revenues and expenses, expenses that will match rather than spending that will exceed the amount of money we're bringing in. And this, and this is the same discussion that people have at their kitchen tables about their own family budgets. We, we can't spend more money than we, than we bring in, and we have to adjust our, we have to set our priorities and adjust our budget accordingly. And we don't do a good job of that in Harrisburg, and we certainly don't do a good job of that in Washington either. But uh, this, is, this is the reality, and, and it's, it, it, it escapes us sometimes, again, as we're, we're mired in the minutia of each budget line item to look at each one and, and uh, try, to, try to accommodate all the different special interest groups as we work through the budget process in Harrisburg. And if, if spending is throwing gasoline on the fire, it's almost as if there's some cans of gasoline sitting in the house that's already on fire waiting to explode as soon as the flames get nearby which is the, the debt and the pension obligations that, that you talked about, John, and that are getting bigger every year, despite the fact that we're trying to bring those under control. This state has not done enough to bring the debt down and to bring the consistently growing pension obligations under control. Even for new employees, even for, for newly elected officials, in many cases, we are qualifying for those same sorts of pensions that got us in all the trouble that we're in now. We haven't even addressed for current employees, let alone uh, for all the pension obligations we have in the past. So those are cans of gasoline that are sort of in the heat, getting ready to blow up and make that fire even more intense. Another big issue is, is the fact that while we've level funded for corrections under the upcoming budget as proposed by the governor, that's a, an ongoing problem that hasn't really been addressed. It's almost like we've kind of tamped out the flames a little bit, but we have not done anything to put the fire out. The, the coals are still burning bright and uh, more flames are going to be coming from the area of corrections that are going to continually uh, put this house, this fiscal house, uh, at risk of burning down. The other big thing, and, and this is a consistent problem for us, is that while we have begun the process of reducing the spending on public welfare, we've only done that in areas other than medical assistance, which is the largest component of the public welfare spending. So the piece that's growing the fastest and is the biggest is still growing under the proposed budget. So there's issues there that, that are just feeding the flames. It's, it's more oxygen for the fire, it's more fuel for the fire, and this is not going to get better by itself. We've got to do something to pour water on it and put it out. Some thoughts, some ideas, some, some, some ways we can fireproof this economy, get the flames under control, and perhaps prevent the, the fire from spreading. A big one and the governor has recognized this, much to his credit, is that we've got to maintain an environment where we don't re re increase our taxes. Increasing taxes is going to be like throwing more gasoline on that raging fire. It doesn't help to just throw more fuel on the fire. We've got to, we've got to get what it is that's consuming all that fuel under control, not just try to fix it by adding more gasoline. Yeah, we'll never fix the problem as long as we continue to fuel it. As long as we provide the money, it'll be spent. And our, our costs will continue to skyrocket, as we've seen on, on the charts, particularly the first chart we saw with, with the expenditures in this state. And um, we've, we can contain that and smooth that out and start to drop it over a period of time, but we've got to be able to say no more new taxes, no tax increases in Pennsylvania. And with that, we have the highest corporate tax structure in America as it is. So we're certainly taxing to a very high level in this state. It's not we like we're letting, not, That's not right. letting we're, we're not letting our taxpayers off easy. No, yeah. we're, we're, no, we're not letting the taxpayers off easy at all. We never have. We have very high taxes in this state across the board on, on, in most areas, but, but in general, they're, they're on the high end across the board and uh, making them higher. And then, you know, you always have the double-edged sword of we, you, you raise taxes and then people spend less. Uh, it, it's less business friendly for, to attract people into Pennsylvania to, to, to grow jobs and prosper here. So we're, we're in the process of um, raising revenue under the, the Rendell years and driving people away from Pennsylvania. In the and Rendell the price years. we pay for those high taxes isn't just the pain of paying taxes, it's losing entrepreneurs and employers right. and growing and thriving businesses that choose to, to relocate in other areas where, where taxes are lower. It's a competitive environment when we're in. These jobs aren't, aren't just going to come to Pennsylvania and stay here because we're here. They will go to where the conditions are, are most favorable. 
Uh, and we are continuing to lose jobs in Pennsylvania to other states and other countries where the tax environment is more favorable. So this isn't a theoretical discussion about no. do you like high taxes or don't you like high taxes. This is about economic survival and the possibility of putting Pennsylvania back in a position where we can compete effectively against other states and other countries for high quality family sustaining jobs. Right. Understanding that this is a very competitive environment and we can't compete with high taxes. We've got to live within our means. Another, another huge step to getting these flames out is stopping this idea of creating a budget where we plan to spend more than we're planning to take in. That's, that's a gamble we can't afford to take. It's, it's a huge risk and it, and it just feeds that, that, that fire because it's inevitable that we're going to be in worse shape by the end of this year than we were at the, the end of the previous year whenever we plan to, to spend more than we take in. Well, we've had, we've had proposals in the legislature for years about taxpayer protection. We, we can cap what we spend in Pennsylvania, and, and some states have done it. We can, we can say that we can't raise our expenditure limit in our budget beyond certain parameters like population growth, the rate of inflation, uh, just the, the growth of the state, the economic growth of the state measured in different ways. We can, we can do that easily at the stroke of a pen, but we choose to ignore those kinds of constraints on our spending because we like to spend in Pennsylvania. And that's why it, it may be time, and, and I would certainly suggest it is, to pursue a constitutional amendment that would actually restrict the growth in state spending uh, to the rate of inflation. Why, when we've grown at, at a rate far exceeding the rate of inflation in our, in our government spending for decade after decade, and we've seen that it doesn't get us better government, why not restrict that? Why not say, let's put a common sense cap on it and say, from now on, we can only grow the state government uh, at a rate that is no higher than the current rate of inflation. It would seem to be a common sense step. It's fireproofing the house. It's helping to keep those, those flames under control. That's right. That's right. And our last... Uh no, it isn't our last item. We have another item, but our, our second to the last item is the prior, prioritizing every dollar. This is something that, again, is a common sense item that if we were sitting at our kitchen table instead of here at the Capitol, we, we would be having a discussion about being able to afford different things, some that we would like and some that we really need. We need to prioritize the, the must-haves that we have in our as, as government providers here, that, 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 that taking care of the, the people's tax dollars and financial obligations, and then um, the, the the other things that are that we're not required to do with government dollars. Taking a real hard look at those to see if we should do them at all. Right. It's and it's certainly a, at the levels that we're doing them now. And it's a question of looking for results when the government spends dollars. In economics, we, we talk a lot about marginal benefit. What do you get? What kind of bang for the buck do you get with that last dollar you spend in any given area? And we haven't really done that as a government in Pennsylvania. We spend on all kinds of programs, but we don't really hold those programs accountable. We don't look at the results. We don't look at how far each dollar went. And those are taxpayer dollars we're talking about. Well, and they're numbers driven because the programs generally, especially in the social services arena, if we service, let's say some, some agency services 10,000 people this year, and then next year they service 12,000 people, well, they'll want more money because they're servicing more people. So their goal is to draw more people into that program. They want, they want more higher numbers so they can get more money. They will little, literally advertise for people to participate in, in programs that are costing the taxpayers money. And, and, and then we don't look at the performance of, are they really helping people? Are they, are they finding people jobs? Are they getting people off of welfare? Are they helping the sick? Are they feeding people? Are they doing these things? We don't know. We just know that the numbers are that more people are coming in their door. So therefore, we have to provide more tax money for that agency. And that is not a good way to do business. And again, that's adding fuel to a fire that's already out of control. And you know, some, some ways we can dampen that fire, some, some ways to throw some water on that would be uh, looking at increased competition, looking at increased choice in such areas as uh, education, looking at uh, public welfare policies that truly encourage people to get quickly off of dependency and in, in back into the workforce looking at involving more private charity who often does a much better, more effective job with every dollar than we do as a government. Uh, looking at just ways we can encourage personal responsibility. People to take responsibility for, for helping themselves and not expecting or, or even advertising the idea that the government should do it for them. 
Well, and, and when we look at the, the, the four alarms that we talked about in the beginning today, uh, those are, are restrictive enough for long-term uh, issues that we, we, we have to make adjustments now. We certainly can make adjustments in those areas and we need to, and we need to restrict as much of the spending there as we can immediately. But on top of that, it affects the rest of our budget. So, uh, you, for example, the, the second largest ex expenditure we have is education, which you just mentioned. And, and that was not one of the four alarms because we can make those changes more immediately. We can, we can do things in this year's budget to cut expenses there, and we can work with local school districts and, and, uh, you know, in a cooperative way or, or you know, maybe through budgetary uh, means. Uh, have them spend a lot less money more efficiently and more effectively and uh, we could we're, we, this the four alarms that we discussed have a broader impact on all the budget lines because they all suffer if we have to take our resources and pay our pension obligation mm -hmm. our debt service our, there are corrections expenses all those things and, and how it's going to be and and in the, in the and the other part of that is there are things that we're spending that are just totally unnecessary right. We, we have areas of, of government that, that we should have privatized decades ago. But it, it, it's, it's, it's not an easy vote to make down here for a lot of people for some reason. But we can't take public resources and compete against the private sector when often the private sector can do it cheaper and better mm -hmm. than the government. And that's not a secret to anybody, but, but it certainly is a difficult thing to get across and, the finish line. And sometimes we, we even do that by law, we require the government to spend unnecessary money or, or more money than necessary on, on such things as public projects that are built under the prevailing wage laws. We're adding 10 to 30 percent to the taxpayer expense of, of building schools and, and road projects and bridges and, and road repairs out in our townships and counties and municipalities uh, just because these prevailing wage laws say you've got to pay a higher than market rate wage to the workers on the projects when they would gladly do those projects for, especially in this economic environment, uh, for, for the going rate. But instead, we're, we're penalizing our taxpayers and forcing them to pay, again, anywhere from 10 to 30 percent more than necessary, getting less bang for the buck instead of more. Right. It's a system that, that doesn't work. So we're, we're hopeful that, that we can, we can um, shed a little more light and a broader perspective on this and, and make sure that people are, are looking at this in the, in the proper context because we, we see on a daily basis that the, the incremental work that's done and, and we need the big picture here. So right. we, we need to, to uh, sound the alarm and uh, start the process of putting out this, this raging fire that's consuming the tax dollars of Pennsylvania. And, and we've got to keep our focus on that, those things that are driving the cost of government they're beyond political. They're, they're, they're simply consuming taxpayer dollars in a way that, that really is, as we stand now, not under anybody's particular control. The, the programs are set, the, the qualifications are there, and they will continue to burn tax dollars unless we do something fundamental to, to alter that equation and, and, and throw the water we need to, to to put those fires out. That's right. And we'll be working on it. And we appreciate everybody's... Uh, everybody's attention and, and uh, will be available for, for questions anytime. Thank, Thank you for being here.